So the Polo has finally arrived to the market and has taken on the VW front end face. And that's no bad thing, because that face is selling many cars. The Polo makes its debut with a completely new range of engines. All engines meet the EU6 emission standard, which isn't required for a long time yet. With two diesel engines and four petrol units that include my favourite, the 1 litre 75 PS from the up. But the, my actual favourite one is this mid-range one. Uh, in a one litre petrol. I think it's lovely. I think it's quite a nice pleasant car. You'd happily drive this car all day. Great fuel economy of it. Lovely little buzzy three cylinder engine under the bonnet. Just does a good job. It really does. Now I was out in a cross polo earlier on today and well still not right. Um, it's lovely to look at. It just Mmm, just something wrong with it still. Just not right. Its suspension's too hard. Um, the suspension's a bit on the hard side. It just, it doesn't, mm, doesn't do it for me. This Polo does. Um, and the Cross Polo actually makes this Polo look good. Uh, and it is good. And that's the key of it. God, that McDonald's just looks all wrong. All wrong in a setting like this. Should have been banned. Random man holding up his trousers there. The, the Polo itself actually is a pleasant car. It's a lovely place to be. I find it very comfortable. It's very economical. It feels like a bigger car than it is. Uh, it, it's got a reversing camera. It's got a new screen in it as well, um, which is kind of like a small version of the Golf one. It's just slightly smaller, but it's very pleasant to look at. Although it is a tiny bit laggy when you're scrolling in and out, especially on a sat nav on the map. When you scroll out and the map rolls away, you're like 10 kilometers out and you want to be two kilometers out. It, it's kind of a little bit laggy in that respect. So what's ahead with the Polo? I mean, this is a midlife crisis one. This is where the, the car has grown up to a point where it needs a little bit of a refresh now, and it has got that refresh. I still think the back is a little on the bland side. Uh, I wouldn't hold that against it. Sometimes you kind of need that feel of, of uh, solidity that comes with the VW range and not necessarily garishness that you get with some of the Frencher cars, you know. Um, there is a certain level of, of uh, ability when it comes to a German car, the way it's put together, the way it feels on the road, the way it rides. Now, they haven't necessarily got it right with the Cross Polo. I wouldn't, I still can't recommend the Cross Polo. I think the suspension is too hard, and that's because they've elevated the car into the, into the air a little bit. I do think the exterior is quite nice, the plastic mouldings as you on the outside do make it look like a tougher prospect. No four wheel drive option, same engine lineup as you get in one of these, so it's not going to be any bigger or any better of a car more capable than this one is it's just literally a lifestyle choice on the outside uh, it's not really that much bigger inside or boot space so why would you overlook this car when, you, when you've got cross polo and then this as well it's more down to a styling choice uh, color choice the exterior colors are slightly different for, for cross polo than it is for the standard polo you can get all the normal colors plus a couple extra there's a three cylinder engine seat Just change gears when the little valves are about to pop out all over the bonnet. Yes! <laughs> and then it settles down to being a very quiet, pleasant engine. Listen. I don't hear it anymore. It's gone from the ears now. It doesn't assault you all the time. It's not constantly buzzing away in the background. It's just a pleasant little car. VW have done a proper job with this car. This one, the Polo, the standard Polo. They've done a really, really good job at putting it together, at making something that fits in just above the up and just below uh, the, the Golf, you know? You just have that proper mid-range thing. And when you think about it, the interior of this car is probably about the same size as a Mark I Golf. You know, it's, it's growing up. It's big inside. It's bigger than it was before. It fits into that bracket just nicely. They have a new 1 litre TSI Blue Motion. It consumes only 4.1 litre per 100 kilometres, according to VW. And the new 1.4 TDI Blue Motion is the most fuel efficient Polo engine with 3.1 litres per 100 kilometres. Trendline, Comfortline, Highline, and Cross Polo are coming out to the market launch. Blue Motion, Blue GT, and GTI will follow over the course of the year. 
The Polo from Volkswagen is one of the world's best-selling compact cars, with nearly 14 million units produced, and around 721,000 drivers opted for the best-seller last year alone. And it mixes it in the top three within Europe alongside Renault Clio and Ford Fiesta. Love the new touchscreen. This is very obviously the best Polo ever made. It is, and they brought the 70s one and the 80s one here for us to have a spinner on. They did have a little spinner in there on, and they're, they're lovely, they're lovely to drive, but they would have been brilliant at the time, but they are totally out of their league here with this one. Uh, this is like driving a limousine in comparison to them. Anyway, until the next time, I shall see you on the far side of these mountains.